So for me, the first stage of my battle process happens here in the studio, well, more precisely in the camera. I always shoot dual cards and I make sure that two copies of everything go on. So it's called redundancy shooting with the menu settings on this particular camera. So there's two SD cards, both of them shooting exactly the same thing, the uncompressed raw files. Now, the most important thing, once the shoot's over and I'm ready to leave the studio, is I take one of the SD cards out of the camera and I pop it over here in this little box so that I don't lose it. So when I leave, I have two copies of all the images in two separate locations from the very beginning. Okay guys, so I've come back from the studio with my extra SD card. Everything else takes place, at least this stage, on the PC over there. So I'm gonna go over there, jump on a screen record and take you through what I do next as part of my backup process. Okay, so to understand my process, you need to understand how I've got my PC set up a little bit. There's several drives on my PC. So Windows C, that's an SSD drive, which covers the operating system and most of the programs. Toshiba 3 terabyte, that's an HDD drive internal, which is used for something that's got nothing to do with photography. Um, the USB drive H, that is the SD card that I just put into the reader. Then we have the Seagate expansion drive home. Um, you'll see later why it's called home. Um, that's an external drive that holds all my photography archive. Um, and it also holds a folder called video backup. So in the pictures folder, oh, well, sorry, within the, image, within the images folder, we have current photo projects and pictures, which is my archive organized by date. So anyway, the important drive here as well is this M2 SSD drive, which is a one terabyte internal SSD drive. Um, and this is where all my current work goes. Um, so I use it for all my current crash air, ongoing things, scratch disk, etc. cetera. Um, this is a way of making um, working faster and easier than using the external SSD drive as I go. So anyway, now you understand a little bit about the structure, this will all make a bit more sense. So when I pop my SSD card, I'm sorry, my SD card into Lightroom to import, it's coming from there and it's going to the current projects folder. I have a current projects preset. Um, don't import duplicates. I always build a one-to-one -one preview straight away. I add it to a folder, a collection, sorry, called to review, uh, which just means it needs me to look after it. That's generally for ongoing personal stuff and it goes into a subfolder organized by date. So, and then we simply import that. And while that's importing, I point out as well that um, what I do is, uh, where is personal workflow? I have that uh, to review folder syncing with Adobe Cloud. That means that I can log into CC on version of Adobe Lightroom on my laptop and previews of these images will be there. So it's easy to review them. Now I wish I'd do that more, but unfortunately, it's quite frustrating because it doesn't have an advanced to next feature when you use star or pick or whatever you want to do on an image, um, which makes the whole thing a bit of a chore. So anyway, now that that's imported, um, forget about the previews, it's not really important in this process. I use a program called GoodSync. They're in good sync. I have lots of different jobs that I've got ongoing, but those four pictures there were, were imported to the current folder, current projects on the M2 drive. So I'll click that, hit analyze. It'll show me what's changed and it will copy the images over to the Seagate home drive. So at this point, I actually have four copies of, of these images that I've taken. There is the SD card in the studio. There is the SD card that's in the machine at the moment. They are on the SSD drive that is on the motherboard of this PC, the M2 drive. And they are also now on my expansion drive, the external hard drive. So I don't feel yet that I can, that I can format the SD card in the studio. That will happen after the next stage is done. So for me, the final stage of my backup process happens here at my office. So from home, I have brought this external SD drive labeled Home01. 
and as you know this contains a copy of everything that's on my PC, archive and current projects. This is just the archive, it has the current projects on the PC. So at this stage we have current projects and archive on here. We have an SD card in the studio with a copy on. We have an SD card in the camera with a copy on. So currently everything is at three locations. We also have located at the office, a second one of these drives, which is completely synchronized with this one, which contains all of my archives. Now I brought this to the office today with the intention of also synchronizing this with the other drive. So I'm going to hook this up to my work PC. And then I'll load up the same program that I use at home, GoodSync. Now, now you can see on GoodSync that I have a couple of quick jobs for when the machine is at work to synchronize it. Quick analysis and sync. You can probably hear the hard drives ticking away furiously in the background there because these are not SSDs, they are traditional H H. They are traditional hard drives. Much cheaper way to store things, just as reliable in the long term, just not necessarily as great for working on as you go, which is why my current projects sit on the SSD drive on the PC at home, as well as being synchronized as a backup to the HDD drive. So when this completes, I will also run two other backups that run in this PC. The first is really simple. It's a program called Backblaze. Now Backblaze simply backs up your computer, including all externally mounted hard drives, as it is to a remote server. There's nothing fancy about it. It literally takes a copy, stores it in the same folders, in the same organization you have on your PC. So if you need to recover something, you can quickly do so. And the second backup process is Amazon Photos, which I have running in the background. Now, the software for Amazon Photos used to be quite poor, but it's much better now. If you are an Amazon Prime customer, you get unlimited photo backup, and this includes raw files. It's slow, it's not efficient, but it offers a different dimension to organization and the ability to share. The system has facial recognition built into it to make it easier for you to find things, everything stored visually so you can scan through the photos, etc. So, so once everything is complete, I will have copies of everything on Backblaze, Amazon Photos, the hard drive in my office, the hard drive at home, and then I can delete quite comfortably the SD cards because I have two physical copies of everything in two separate physical locations and I have two online copies of everything with two separate companies. Now, I'm sure there's probably some holes in my backup process. Feel free to shoot through them. And it's very much customized to me. Fits in with my lifestyle. I appreciate not everybody can keep a second hard drive at work and they can't or have the, their employer might not let them back everything up at work. All right, so if you manage to stick that out, well done you. But I think what's really important to remember about backup processes is that the backup process is mine. It's designed to sit, work with my lifestyle and there's no point trying to replicate it exactly. Everybody's process needs to fit with their own lifestyle and their own way of shooting, their own way of working. Otherwise, you won't stick with it and it'll fall behind. So fundamentally, I think what you need to achieve with a backup process is you need a local copy and a non-local copy as soon as possible. By non-local, I mean not stored in your house or your main place of work. So two copies in two different locations. And I think for most people, that would be good enough. So for me, the studio to the home to the office works fine because I'm between those places all the time. I don't go out of my way to take the hard drives there and sync them. I'm going there anyway. It's just a case of putting it in a backpack and taking it along with me. But for you, if you simply work out and about in the environment and you should do all your processing at home, 
then there are a couple of different things you could do. Um, the simplest, of course, is just to, to leave the SD card in the glove box of your car until you've finished making an online backup. But obviously, not everybody has internet that's good enough to make online backups. So in that circumstances, what I would personally suggest was I would just have two external hard drives, one for the archive and one that I backed up to. Then what I would do is I would back up to the second external hard drive and I'd leave it in the boot of my car. Um, now obviously there's a chance of the car being stolen or something happening with that. Um, you can get hard drives that you can password protect. Um, and programs like GoodSync will work with that. You can save the password in it so it doesn't have to constantly ask for it. Um, so yeah, the key here, as far as I'm concerned, is make sure that you have your backup in two completely different locations.